I have been present at wedding celebrations all my life. Uh, since 1973, when I was ordained a deacon, I have witnessed weddings as the church's minister, and many, many times after that, as a priest, even as a bishop. And with very few exceptions, weddings tend to be joy-filled events. Uh, two people love each other so much, they're ready to pledge their love for better or worse, for richer or poorer. It is a joy to see a groom watch his bride walk down the aisle. It is a blessing for a family when their beloved children make these promises. At weddings, we tend all of us to remember the promises we made to God and to one another. And they're usually occasions for a lot of storytelling about how Grandma and Grandpa met, about crazy Uncle Jack, about uh, all sorts of things. College roommates tell embarrassing stories about the bride and the groom. A lot of good things are remembered. And in many ways, it is a challenge for Christian believers who attend weddings to live what is celebrated at that moment. I say all this because today's feast in its essentials, is really about spousal love. The Holy Temple in Jerusalem, which took 40 years to build, actually it wasn't completed until about 10 years after the death and rising of Christ, was considered the holiest place on earth. The city of Jerusalem was holy. The courts of the Gentiles, the women and the men, was holy. The court of the priests was holy. The holy place was holy. And the most holy place, which only the high priest could enter, and then only once a year on the day of the Torah, was so holy, only priests, the descendants of Aaron, built them. They were trained as stonemasons, because no one, no one but the anointed priest could touch the bricks that would enclose that most holy place. And that is because the name of the Lord was reverenced there. And if you know your Old Testament, you know among all the titles we have for God, that he was the spouse of Israel. He was the ardent husband of Israel. He had met her, engaged to her, welcomed her, forgave her, and desired that Israel always live in union with him. So the most holy place of the temple was a place of awesome, incomparable love. That love which is in God, and that love which is actually at the heart of our faith. I don't think at the presentation of our Lord, many people noticed what was going on. There come a husband and wife from Nazareth. The place is crowded with people. Um, and they're carrying the child to present him to the Lord in obedience to the law of the Lord. Anna, the prophetess, guided by the Holy Spirit, recognized him. And Simeon, with those unforgettable words, pronounced prophecy about Jesus and about Mary. That Jesus was truly the light of the nations and the glory of his people Israel. That he would be the cause for the falling and rising of many in Israel. But he would be a sign that would be rejected. Because St. Joseph had to hear that. And then hear that Mary, that a sword of sun would pierce her heart because of her fidelity to her child and to the love who is our God. You know, I don't know if I'm time machines in heaven. I would love to see the most holy temple. Uh, like to see the right.
lights that are reading about the Long High Life. Uh, it was an awesome place. Even the pagans said, when you be riding up to Jerusalem on a donkey horse, the sun, the head, the golden tops of that temple, you were almost blind. It was bigger than 23 football stadiums. It was one of the largest edifices on earth. And all of the rites and customs and faith of Israel revolved around it. And as I said, you know, only the high priest once a year would go into the most holy place and pronounce God's name. But all of that was just a shadow of what we share together. Jesus Christ is our temple. He is our sacrifice. He is our atonement. He is God with us. He is the seal that God will do anything to win our hearts. And in many ways, Christian marriage is an awesome sign of that ardent love that God has for us individually, collectively, and which we should try to have for Him. If we aren't in love, with God, we're missing the heart of our Christian faith. And the secret of being in love with God is to let His light, His glory, His truth, His infinite love capture our hearts. And we should try to share that love.